is a book review of The Twelve, a thrilling novel of tomorrow. Well, obviously not, but these characters are all from the past. This is the big thing about this story. All these characters are all Marvel characters, or timely as it was called back in the day, but they're all characters that really only had one or two issues. They were not the big names. These were sort of the minor lot compared with Captain America, Submariner, Human Torch. They were the contenders that could have been and should have been in some cases. Actually, to be honest, this book really, I'll talk about that, does develop the characters a lot more than they ever had back in the day. And I'm going to quickly show you some of the, before I go any further with that, we've got this brilliant book here that's really, if you want to find out more about the characters, you would find it in this book, World War II Superheroes, Marvel First. You've got all of the old stories with the Silver Scorpion and loads of, loads of other characters that don't appear in this, but also many of the characters that do, all their origins, etc. Very, very good book from the 1940s. So these characters, oh, if I go any further, this book, 2008, this book came out in 2012. Bit of a gap because the uh, writer went on to a fairly successful career in films, obviously, and uh, there was a bit of a gap. But, however, when you got around to it, 12, 1 to 6, how can you do that? Successful career. I mean, really, you should have been doing... Comics clearly are more important. Anyway, 7 to 12, the 12, and also 12, Spearhead, Marvel. Now, I'm going to go to the first one first. Best to go with. So you've got these characters. They're minor characters. And they're... Oh, before I go any further, there's the, all the credits. Because obviously, I think the colouring is brilliant all the way through this. Lettering is superb as well. I, so, there are all the people there. So you've got this initial start there with all the characters. Miss America, Submariner. Now, none of these characters really appear in this book. A little bit, not very much. Probably more so, a little bit more at the end. But uh, not particularly. Uh, they're all more cameo appearances. This book is The Twelve, not really the main characters of the Marvel. Which is a pity, really, because when you read this, you really think, to be honest, some of these characters could, in really in good hands, could have been really great characters and would have been developed in a way that they wouldn't have just had one or two. But I guess at the end of the day, they obviously looked at the sales. Martin Goodman and all those people, they would have looked at the sales and said, oh, that's not going anywhere. We're not going to have it. He's no use. No letters come back. No one saying we want that character. That's it, he's gone, which is a pity, but they were trying out lots of these characters. Anyway, you've got the superheroes, they go off, you've got like Electro, he's got this massive robot. Now Electro also turned up, as quite a popular name, there was a character in the 50s called Electro as well, and I think he turned up really early in the uh, Marvel stories, Electro, and of course you've got the villain, Electro, no right. However, there's a really nice bit with the uh, connection, because the uh, guy running him is like back in the States, and you've got, so what happens, they get locked away, and all these characters get locked away in a room. And of course, suddenly they, they're uh, at the mercy of the Nazis. A bit of a spoiler, but not much of a spoiler. That's the storyline, because it is today. The story is today. Obviously, it's the Nazis. They put them in suspended animation. So, obviously, the Nazis had that technology. Really useful. What do you do? You don't put your uh, high echelon people, tuck them away. You go and but freeze the uh, people, some superheroes, that probably will cause you some trouble later. But what? So you've got this, these characters all frozen away. As the war, of course, ends, the world moves on, and obviously people's lives move on as well. All the people that they, were, they loved, all their kids, everyone obviously gets older. Now, I have to say, this is a much nicer way of doing this story than, because obviously the Americans find the uh, superheroes, very lucky it wasn't the uh, Russians, obviously. They would have all ended up being Russian superheroes. That would have been a slightly different story. Red Sun kind of thing. But it's, uh, I think it's quite good. But I think it's better than Captain America's origin, frankly, where he's sort of on that plane and ends up spending in a, a block of ice. That would have been a much better story. Never liked that, in, that story. Never, ever. I always thought that was so silly. Silly idea. Really? No. And that happens to suddenly be cut, the Avengers come across you. How lucky was that? However, you've got these characters. They're all uh, being looked after by the uh, Americans. But obviously, they don't want to reveal initially that the world has moved on a bit. So they're sort of making it look like ye olde days. And of course, 
they're all uh, sort of living their life. And suddenly things, of course, they realise at one point. And then the story continues. So we've got all these characters. Some characters, of course, really fall apart. You know, really, that's it. They're, their lives, what? You know, they suddenly realise and they, they're searching, they try and look back. He's got this character, which is a real good... Uh, he could have been the swordsman character. You've got the blue blade. I don't know how many pit times he appeared in comics back in uh, in the day in, in Marvel, but uh, you've got the blue blade. Well, he doesn't really... I don't think he wants to be much of a superhero. He's in it for the fame. Some of these are in it for the sort of going out on the... But he's in it for the fame and have a TV show and those sort of stuff. So it's it's quite... A, I, it's really nice, that storyline. You've got the Black Widow as well. Now, she's one of the prominent characters in the story. You've got the Phantom Reporter. You've got uh, loads of other characters. I mean, it's, it's just really quite sad. So in the, the first book, there's a lot of, yes, a lot of sadness all the way through it. So it's, it's not, I would say, a super cheerful read initially, but I loved it. I have to say, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it's, uh, and also you learn a bit about some of the characters. And I'm not going to show that bit because that does give a lot away. But you've got these great covers, just all the way through the 12 theory marks. You learn about the origins, obviously. And they're not all what they, you know, they claim. They all got their origin. They tell their origin story at places. It's very dark, the artwork as well. Very, you know, it's it's not, it's subdued. It's not a bright, cheerful artwork. But it's still great artwork. I loved it. Absolutely. Though, you've of course, got some lovely bits here. There's a lots of sort of... And it's, a, not, it's a, lots of romance in it because you've got some, lots of relationships between the characters, lots of hatreds. They don't get on with each other. They're just a random group of people. They got together. They really don't get on in some places. We've also got, uh, say, characters that, uh, well, but it's great. It, it is very good. Lots of, like I say, lots of sadness all the way through. But also... I love this bit. This is uh, really good. You've got Black Widow. So, of course, the story, because she's uh, given her powers by, well, I assume, some demon or Satan or whatever, you, that storyline hasn't ended for her. That's another problem. Suddenly, he hasn't forgotten after 60 years. You know, you're still... So that's a quite a, an interest. But it's, it's a murder mystery as well in this story. So there's also, like, a detective's murder mystery. The army's involved. There's also... Uh, Problems with this robot, who owns the thing. So there's lots of uh, issues like that that's really quite well done. But I think that's quite a dramatic scene there. You've got a really powerful scene with the uh, Black Widow. Now, she's absolutely stunning all the way through the book, but she's like more like an Ice Maiden character. But uh, there's obviously a lot more to her than meets the eye. And it's, um, yeah, interesting. Obviously, she's got the power... Uh, touches death, though she does turn around and point out that uh, only if she wants it to be, which is quite useful because that would be a really tricky person to have a relationship with. Oh, by the way, my touch kills you. Mm, yeah, that's going a long way. Anyway, you've got uh, the fairy mask and all these old characters. They all, of course, don't realise the world has changed around them. Some, let's say, work, work it out. Some don't. It, it is really... Actually, I don't think any of them particularly work it out that well, but uh, who would? Suddenly, if I was suddenly frozen at this moment, suddenly I suddenly woke up in 20 or 200 or something, and the world would be changed, and you'd be thinking, well, hang on, it's not like the world that I thought it was like. Then you'd put your foot in it and do stupid things and say things that are completely inappropriate or whatever to the time that you're now in. So you've got these great characters. And... Actually, I loved all the characters. There wasn't a bad character in here. I, I thought that all the characters were absolutely brilliant. Now, on to the next book. I love that. The Phantom Reporter. The storyline, there's a lot of the storyline. You've got his story going along long top, so he's talking about the various things. Listen, and actually, when I just look into it again, there is quite a lot of sadness even in this one. There's a lot of really quite, hmm, yeah, endings. Uh, but there's lots of clues that you can spot all the way through because it's a it is like say, a murder mystery story as well. So uh, it's lots of levels, which is good from a story. You don't want a story that is just one thing. I just love that robot. That robot's really good. you couldn't imagine. But I must admit, he's I don't know, he's, he looks a pretty big guy. And I wouldn't want him to uh, 
uh, wouldn't want to mess around with him. But so uh, you got the uh, daughter of the uh, obviously the inventor there, and uh, just beautiful. Like I said, the artwork is great throughout, and the storyline it's very simplistic artwork in terms of there's not really overly lots of splash pages and all the usual sort of stuff that you get in some of these things. It's very much a, a good old uh, six or seven panel pages all the way through, which I like. I must admit, that sort of thing. I like to know the flow of the story. That is the key thing for me, because then you can read it reasonably quickly. And of course, you, when you pick it up again, you can read it quickly. I'm afraid I, I just don't, sometimes when panels are mess all over the place, I'm never so keen on that. Old fashioned, maybe, because I sell so up the 60s, 70s stuff, so. But, the story builds up, obviously, to a very dramatic, powerful end at the end of it. And I think, well, it just, probably the, the about halfway through the book, it really sort of picks up intensity, and I just think it's great. I have to say, this was an absolute joy to read from start to finish. You don't even have to know, have to need to know anything about these characters. In fact, you they could have been any characters, just random sort of characters that maybe didn't even exist back in the past. It gives that poignancy that they did actually exist, only briefly, obviously, as characters. So it's uh, it's really nice that they... And it's a pity, I don't know how many of these characters went on to have additional stories. You know, did, you know, X, Y, Z, without saying who survives, who doesn't in the storyline, if any of these characters ever had any further story. Who knows? I haven't followed every single story of Marvel, so I, I wouldn't know about that. But you've got this book. I just think it's just absolutely, I love that character. I love his purple suit. You can't be a purple suit like that, can you? He'd be perfect in my local choir. We were all in, we're in purple, so uh, he'd be uh, an easily a member of that. So absolutely brilliant, brilliant book. And even better is the story ends and you think, oh, that's it. But there is another story in this, The Twelve, Spearhead. And that actually boosts it up even higher because, as I said before, most of the main characters of the timely period do not appear. However, there's a few more appearances, etc., of characters that are maybe slightly more familiar to a modern audience. So I think it's just... That was just a lovely bonus thing. Without saying anything, what happens in it, what the conclusions of the story, etc., etc. But it was a lovely bonus surprise at the end. Slightly spoiler, my apologies for that. But I didn't say who's in it. I'm not going to say who, who the characters are. So, the 12. The other ones disappeared. It's 12. So, two absolutely Brilliant, brilliant books and totally recommended. I love these. Definitely worth checking out.